All right, let's kick this off. Thank you everyone for joining us. You are joining Aparo's Nonprofit Bites and Insights. These are our webinar series that we have tailored specifically for nonprofits. We have topics and speakers from all different industries to come generously share their knowledge and insights with us. And today we are lucky to have Matt Sharp, founder and president of Sharp Advising here to lead a conversation on strategies for streamlining your nonprofit operations on a budget. Uh, but before I turn it over to him, uh, a few housekeeping details. Yes, this session is being recorded and it will be shared on our website as well as our YouTube channel. However, all of you who are attending live today, you will receive a follow-up email from me. It'll include the direct link to the recording so you don't have to look for it, as well as slide deck and any resources that we talk about today. Q&A and chat box are available for you to use. Feel free to drop in your questions at any time throughout our conversation today. I do ask that you put your questions into the Q&A box. It'll just help us organize it and make sure that your question doesn't get lost in the chat box. For those of you who are new to Aparo, welcome a little about us. Um, we are a nonprofit ourselves. We are based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And what we do is we help other nonprofits with anything technology, any of your technology needs, questions, challenges, that's what we're here for. And we offer a, a range of services to try and meet where you're at, including one-on-one -on -one consulting, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we also have team trainings and solution-based, um, solution-focused projects. I do want to mention for the one-on-one -on -one coaching that is open to any nonprofit staff. So you don't need to be leadership. You can share it with your staff. If they ever have any questions about anything they're working on technology-wise, they are more than welcome to reach out and we will connect them with a the coach. To learn more about us or to request any of our services, you can go to our website at apar.org backslash nonprofits and fill out that request form. You can also subscribe to our email list to stay updated on our programming. My email address is there if you'd like to reach out directly. All right, well, that's it for me. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Matt. Excellent. Thank you, Yinteng. Let me get my presentation up. All right, get all situated here. Okay, so welcome everyone. So glad that you've taken the opportunity and the time uh, to come here today uh, to join us for this webinar. Uh, again, smart strategies for nonprofits, streamlining operations on a budget. Uh, before we get started, want to throw this out there if you uh, can in the chat feature, uh, introduce yourself with your name, your organization, and the role, just so I have an idea of who's in the room. That would be great. And as you are introducing yourself, let me go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Matt Sharp, president and founder of Sharp Advising. Sharp Advising is a consulting firm that partners with small to mid-sized nonprofit organizations to help them build capacity through intentional operational assessment, process improvement, organizational development, and strategic initiatives, thereby allowing them to thrive and succeed in new ways. Before I joined and before I started uh, Sharp Advising though, I was a COO for a small nonprofit here in Charlotte. And so I know firsthand what it feels like to be overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day operations of a nonprofit. Uh, I came to that nonprofit about five years into its existence so systems, processes, uh, procedures, organization wasn't necessarily there. And so having to build and grow that, uh, again, firsthand knowledge and experience with that. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. How to streamline operations to build more time in your day and your team's day so you can focus more energy on your mission and the communities you serve. Uh, as Ying Ting mentioned during the presentation, Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A tab versus the uh, the chat feature. Obviously, I want to see your names and, and roles in the, the chat, but um, questions go in the Q&A portion so we can keep that separate. 
And uh, as Ting mentioned, no need to feverishly take screenshots of the presentation. You'll be receiving all the slides following, uh, following the presentation. Uh, I want to get a quick look at who's in the room. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Welcome, Rita and Michael, Lisa, Maurice, uh, everyone here. I'm so excited to, to have you here today. Uh, so getting started, webinar outcomes. We all love outcomes in, in the nonprofit world. So uh, overview of today, we're going to discuss challenges nonprofits encounter regarding day-to-day -day operational effectiveness. We're going to highlight the impact these challenges have on a nonprofit, and we're going to review smart strategies to overcome these challenges. So by the end of the webinar, we hope you're going to be equipped with practical strategies to streamline operational tasks and workflows, be more aware of how to leverage limited resources to achieve greater efficiency and impact, and learn some of the various free and low-cost tools for simplifying common nonprofit operations. So before we get started, uh, what I have done is I've come up with a list of the top five challenges nonprofits face in day-to-day -day operations. So these are the nonprofit challenges I feel from my experience and uh, from, from the work I do. These are the top five challenges. And so we're gonna go through the challenges and then we're gonna work on uh, process and solutions. So as we look at the top five challenges, first, manual processes and inefficient workflows. Nonprofits often rely on outdated paper-based systems and disjointed processes that hinder productivity. Uh, this can manifest in repetitive, fragmented workflows and a lack of standardization. So examples of that would be manually tracking donations and donor information in spreadsheets, using paper-based systems for volunteer applications and scheduling, and spending excessive time on routine communication tasks that could be automated. The impact of this is valuable staff hours wasted on repetitive tasks instead of mission-critical work, increased risk of human error due to manual data entry and processing, bottlenecks and delays in decision-making and project implementation, and difficulty scaling operations as the organization grows. The next challenge would be communication and collaboration barriers. Nonprofits may struggle with fragmented communication channels, scattered information, and siloed work across departments or teams. Examples of this challenge would be import emails getting lost and cluttered, and inboxes and, and overlooked due to lack of prioritization, team members working on different versions of documents leading to confusion and rework, difficulty tracking project uh, progress and milestones leading to uh, missed deadlines and unexpected setbacks. Potential impact is misunderstandings, errors, and duplicated efforts that waste time and resources, delays in decision-making and project implementation due to information or alignment, or lack of information or alignment, I should say, uh, decreased staff morale and engagement due to feeling isolated or uninformed, and reduced innovation and problem solving due to limited cross-functional collaboration. The third would be data management and reporting inefficiencies. Many nonprofits struggle with fragmented data sources, manual data entry, and difficulty generating reports. So examples of that would be donor information spread across spreadsheets, email threads, and paper files. I know that certainly was one of the areas where uh, I had to tackle when, when I first started as COO, uh, just the litany of different uh, threads of, of information across multiple spreadsheets and, and paper forms. Another example would be program data collected manually and stored in disparate locations. And then time-consuming report generation processes that involve manual data compilation and formatting. The impact is difficulty demonstrating impact to funders, stakeholders due to lack of reliable data, ineffective program evaluation, and limited ability to identify areas for improvement, increased risk of non-compliance with reporting requirements, and wasted staff time on manual data, uh, data entry and report generation. 
The fourth challenge would be suboptimal use of technology. Obviously, uh, our partner friends at Aparo here uh, know all about technology use, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Uh, that So this area is nonprofits may be underutilizing existing technology, failing to integrate tools effectively, or resisting the adaptation or adoption of new solutions due to perceived barriers. Examples are using basic features of CRM systems while ignoring advanced functionalities like email automation and donor segmentation, not integrating online donation forms with your accounting systems and softwares resulting in double data entry, and lack of staff training on how to maximize the potential existing technology. The potential impact, missed opportunities for efficiency gains and cost savings, increased manual work, and potential for errors due to a reliance on outdated processes. And finally, frustration among staff who feel their tools are hindering rather than helping them. And the final challenge, inadequate onboarding and training. Lack of structured onboarding processes, inconsistent training methods, and difficulty assessing information can hinder the productivity and engagement of new staff and volunteers. I for one know firsthand what that looks like, and I'm sure many of you do as well. Uh, a lack of structured onboarding process for sure can, can cause, uh, cause challenges. So examples are new hires feeling overwhelmed and unsupported during their initial weeks, leading to high turnover. Volunteers lacking the necessary information or skills to perform their roles effectively. Staff members unsure of where to find resources or how to troubleshoot issues. And inconsistent training methods resulting in varying levels of knowledge and competency across the organization. The impact of this are, are slow onboarding and, and ramp up time for new team members or volunteers delaying their full contribution. Increased risk of errors and inconsistencies due to lack of knowledge of training and difficulty retaining talented individuals due to limited growth opportunities. And so those are the five challenges, the top five challenges I believe nonprofits face in day-to-day -day operations. When you registered for this webinar, you were asked four questions. Uh, and I wanna show you that, that registration poll data in a second, uh, because I think it connects to these challenges. And so, the first question, if you remember answering uh, on a scale, was uh, scaling our organization has standardized written procedures and workflows to streamline operational functions. So you were asked that question and asked to rate from a I don't know to completely agree. So as you look at the results, I hope you can look at this and see some commonality. Uh, if you rated yourselves a completely agree, you're not alone. There's others that uh, have written standard uh, procedures and workflows. But for those of you who are on the opposite end that do not agree or somewhat agree, again, you're not alone. Uh, I would ask you to think through your response for this and the other responses as we move forward. And, and how can you then take these solutions that we're going to talk about and strategies and implement them uh, around some of these questions that, that I asked? Uh, the next question was about technology uh, to support operational functions and their adequacy on size and complexity of the organization. Uh, client management, accounting software, donor management, you know, how adequate are those technology systems related to uh, your organization? Uh, as you can see here, a similar, uh, similar bend in, in the, the result, uh, but many of you still in the somewhat agree, somewhat in that, that middle category. Uh, the next question was, our organization utilizes technology to streamline internal processes. Again, same thing. Many of you in the middle there at, at 23 uh, or some agree. And let me just, on a side note, state that when we're done this webinar, the goal isn't for you to be able to tomorrow solve everything. It's how you take incremental steps uh, to move forward. 
So if you're in the do not agree for technology used to streamline inter internal processes, how do we get you to somewhat agree or agree to completely agree? Uh, and that's the goal here today is to give you the tools needed to move you in the right direction in some of these areas. And the final area uh, or the final question was what resources, time, budget, and staff are you most limited in? I, I could guess what the answers were gonna be, but uh, wanted to see it too and still ask. And as you can see, uh, budget, staff, and time all together for 24 uh, that were able to answer this uh, are the limited resources. And I get that. Uh, working at a small nonprofit, all three of these things were true. Budget, staff, and time were limited. But how do we find the time? How do we scrape together some of the budget? And how do we build capacity for our staff to tackle some of these operational issues so that your day-to-day -day operations can be streamlined and can ultimately create more capacity for you and for your staff to be able to do the great work that you're doing uh, with the communities that you serve. And so as you think of these challenges and that can be daunting and how do we move it forward and how do we think about what areas do we need to even tackle? I think before we talk about solutions and strategies, we have to find out, well, where are we going wrong? You know, where do we need to identify uh, the areas to help streamline? And so I've come up with a four-step process uh, or four steps to begin the process of streamlining your operations. And the first step is review and assess systems and processes. The first step to streamlining is understanding where your current operations are falling short. This involves gathering data and insights to identify bottlenecks, pain points, and opportunities for improvement. But how do you do that, right? What are, the, what are those activities you can do to find that data, to gather that data? So these are four activities that you could implement with your staff, your board, your volunteers, to help to gather that data. The first is the pain point survey. And so with that, you would conduct a survey to gather feedback from staff or volunteers on their biggest operational challenges, frustrations with existing tools and ideas for improvement. This gives a voice to the people directly impacted by operational inefficiencies. It uncovers hidden pain points and can generate valuable ideas for streamlining solutions. The next is a time tracking exercise, pretty simple you would have your staff track how they spend their time for a week, noting each task and its duration. This can be done by using simple spreadsheet or a time tracking software, or even a piece of paper and a pen or sticky notes next to your desk. This task would reveal how time is spent on manual repetitive tasks that could be automated or streamlined. It helps prioritize areas for improvement based on where the most time is spent and where it's being wasted, to be honest. The next is technology audit. Create an inventory of all software and tools used by the organization. Assess their usage, effectiveness, and integration with other systems. Now I'm gonna provide a link to this information in a second or at the very end of the, the webinar, but Aparo is your partner in this. There is a, uh, an assessment that you could take, an easy assessment to help with the technology audit, or there's also uh, a program you can apply for, technology therapy. Uh, that would be a longer term, larger scale way to assess your technology uh, plans and, and creating aud audits for, for how do you move forward. And so again, if you haven't already been a part of that, I would certainly suggest uh, looking into that. And there's a resource for that at the very end of this. The last um, item or uh, activity you could do is a process mapping workshop. Gather a cross-functional team, or if you're a small organization, the two or three of you uh, with volunteers that are part of that team, and visually map out key processes. That might be grant applications, event planning, donor onboarding, any process that you feel is critical to your organization, 
and map it out. Use sticky notes, a whiteboard, online tools, and write through what the process is and what steps are taken for that process. It identifies bottlenecks, redundancies, and opportunities for simplification, and it fosters collaboration and shared understanding of how work gets done. So even if you don't think there's inefficiencies, walking through a process with your staff or volunteers allows them to make sure that they're on the same page with you and vice versa with how systems and processes get done. So that's step one, review and assess systems and processes. Step two is prioritize opportunities and set clear goals. Once you have clear pictures of your current operational landscape, it's time to focus on efforts or it's time to focus your efforts and prioritize the areas that have the biggest potential for impact and set smart goals to guide your streamlining initiatives. Activity one, analyze assessment findings. For whatever activity you use, whether it was one of the four that I suggested or some other uh, model that you're using, assess and analyze those findings. Review the data collected from surveys, time tracking, technology, process mapping, and identify common themes, recurring challenges, and areas with the highest impact for potential growth. And we'll repeat that, the highest impact. You might come out of this uh, analyzation of, of some of these assessments and think we have so many things to work on and to tackle. It doesn't all have to be done today. What is the highest priority and the biggest impact? And focus on that first. Once you have identified that, set SMART goals. SMART, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. I know you're all aware of what SMART goals are. And this could be or include reducing time spent on specific tasks, increasing efficiency metrics, or improving staff satisfaction scores. Some examples of uh, goals that I would set, implement a new cloud-based management system for documents. And do that by end of Q3 to centralize all organizational files and improve accessibility. Complete a full technology audit of all software and hardware by the end of Q4 to identify opportunities for consolidations, upgrades, or placements. Or do you develop and deliver a comprehensive staff training program on the new CRM system or existing CRM system by the end of the month to increase user adoption and maximize its potential? to analyze those assessment findings and define SMART goals as part of prioritized opportunities and setting clear goals. The next step is to design and implement. Now it's time to put your plans in action. Design new streamlined processes, document them clearly, implement changes gradually, and communicate effectively with your team. And so four areas you can focus on in activities, number one, design streamlined processes. Based on the insights gained in the first two steps, create new workflows that eliminate redundancies, automate tasks, and optimize utilization. If volunteer scheduling is causing confusion, design a new process using volunteer management software to automate scheduling, send reminders, and track hours. If event planning involves multiple spreadsheets and emails, create a centralized project management board to track tasks, deadlines, and responsibilities. The benefits are improving efficiency by removing unnecessary steps and bottlenecks, enhancing productivity by automating repetitive tasks. The next, document new procedures. Create clear, concise, and easily accessible documentation for all new streamlined processes. Include step-by-step -step instructions, decision points, and responsible parties so that anyone who takes on this new procedure is clear with what needs to be done. 
develop a checklist for submitting expense reports, outlining the required documentation approval process and, and, reverse and reimbursement timeline. Document the process for creating it and scheduling social media posts, including guidelines for content, tone, and visuals. And maybe you're gonna create a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the new volunteer software, including instructions for scheduling shifts, communicating with volunteers, and tracking hours. The next would be implement changes incre incrementally. We've talked about this. Roll out new procedures and processes and phases. Starting with a pilot project or a smaller department or, or a smaller area to focus on, gather feedback and make adjustments before implementing organization-wide, before everyone knows about it. Start small. And again, when a small team that might be, you don't have that luxury, you just need to, to roll it out, uh, but still utilize that feedback uh, piece of it. An example would be pilot new donor management system with a small group of donors before migrating to the entire donor base. You know, you don't want to start this whole process, launch it, and then have to make tweaks and changes and communicate that you had to make tweaks and changes. Start small. And lastly, communicate clearly and consistently. Inform staff about the changes, the rationale behind them, and the expected benefits. Don't forget to provide training and support to ensure smooth transition. Examples of this would be hosting a training session on the new CRM system, create user guides, and establish a dedicated point of contact for questions. You might want to create a short video tutorial on how to use the project management board for event planning and share it with staff, or hold a brief meeting to explain the benefits of the meeting scheduling tool and demonstrate how to use it. The last piece of the step is evaluation and continuous improvement. I think that's an area that I faltered in my role as COO at times. Uh, I'm not sure if others do as well as the evaluation piece and continuous improvement. Sometimes once you launch that boat into the water, you don't have time to evaluate it. Uh, maybe a little bit, is it working well? Great, we're gonna move forward. But once it's in there, you're not looking at it for two or three months or even a year or two. I know a lot of you might uh, resonate with this, a new CRM system. You start it, it does what it needs to do, but then you're not really looking at it, evaluating it for another year when you could have been making tweaks and changes as the time went on. You know, streamlining is not a one-time fix. It's an ongoing process. Regularly monitoring the impact of your changes, gathering feedback from your team, and adapting your strategies to ensure continued success is important. So the three areas to look at in this step, monitor and measure to track key metrics before and after implementation to assess the impact of changes. This could include time saved, cost reduction, error rate, staff satisfaction. You, know, you might want to track the average time spent on grant applications before and after implementing the new standard operating procedures. That might help to see, to show you, it, did our procedures and changes work, or maybe we have to tweak them. Gather feedback. Regularly collect feedback from staff on the new processes. Use surveys or focus groups or just one-on-one -on -one meetings to gather these insights and ensure that it works for them it's not cumbersome and it's leading to what you need it to is, is creating more uh, capacity and efficiency. And finally, adapt and iterate. Based on the collected data and feedback, refine the processes, adjust the workflows, and make necessary steps to technology tools. So let me push pause for a second. I know there was a lot of information. You know, we talked about the five top challenges and how to use these steps to begin the process of streamlining operations. And so as you think of the information uh, we just went through, uh, I have a participant poll I would love you to, uh, to participate in. And so Yen Teng, if you can pop that up there, 
Uh, the question is going to be, which areas of your operations do you believe could benefit most from streamlining? Uh, it's a multiple choice question. Uh, I would ask you to choose maybe the top two or three. Let's use three, the top three areas. Uh, and, and how does that work for you? Um, so which areas of your operations do you believe could benefit most from streamlining? Can you see the poll? Let's see, I cannot, but I have multiple screens, so that might not be me. No. Nope. Okay. Looks like we're getting no for people. No poll yet. Mm -hmm. There it is. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So your top three, which areas of your operations do you believe could benefit most from streamlining? Program delivery. Fundraising and development, volunteer management, marketing and communications, finance and accounting, human resources, IT and technology, board governance, or other. And so take a few seconds to fill that out and then we will we'll view it. Give it a couple more seconds, about halfway, half of you have answered. I should have said this is going to be an interactive uh, webinar. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and end it and share the results. All right, so it looks like, I mean, Fundraising and development, 55% of you. Uh, marketing and communications is a good good bit. Seems like program delivery, finance and accounting are, are right there. Uh, pulling up the rear. And I know I'm looking, uh, seems like Josh, you know, project management process, onboarding, uh, mm -hmm. certainly. You know, those are two areas where I, I would see some pretty simple onboarding or excuse me, uh, streamlining options. Uh, for you to to focus on. So again, it goes back to you're not alone. If you think you need to streamline uh, your marketing and communication operations, your fundraising development, or any of these items, uh, there's multiple people uh, that are in the same boat. Uh, so thank you for participating in, in that uh, in that poll. So now let's talk about solutions. You know, we talked about again the top five challenges the process to, to begin streamlining operations. Well, let's talk about pro, uh, solutions and smart strategies, specifically revolving around those five challenges. So when we think about manual processes or inefficient workflows, um, you know, what can be done? What are some strategies or, or some solutions to help overcome those challenges? The first, We've mentioned it, but just want to bring that full circle is process standardization. In developing clear written procedures for recurring tasks is, is critical. This ensures consistency, reduces errors, and simplifies onboarding for new staff um, or, or other areas of processes. Examples would be creating a, an SOP or standard operating procedures for processing volunteer applications. You know, Josh, to your point, onboarding for whether that's volunteers or new staff, uh, what would it look like to have a check sheet and, and a list already ready to go uh, that you know specifically what a new staff member, what a new volunteer is going to go through, and that's consistent throughout. So they're not going to get a, a different onboarding process, whether it's you onboarding them or me onboarding them, it's all consistent. The next template utilization. And these items that I'm going to bring up might seem pretty simple, but sometimes it's the simplest tasks that are the most powerful. So template utilization, create and utilize templates for frequently used documents, emails, and other communications to ensure consistency, save time, and reduce errors. The benefits of creating these templates, obviously, streamlining 
uh, repetitive task eliminates the need to reinvent the wheel for each new document or communication and promotes a professional and unified brand image. Example would be create email templates for donor acknowledgements, event invitations, and volunteer recruitment communications. I know many of you probably already have those templates as that example shows, but for those of you who don't, I would strongly suggest creating those or other templates uh, uh, similar to that. And the final task automation. Identify tasks that can be automated using free or low cost tools and implement automation to streamline workflows. For many of you, uh, you might've used Zapier in the past. Uh, that's a system that uses uh, apps to connect different um, systems that you have, different technology systems, and it more freely connects those. Uh, it's a third party technology, but it can be brought in to connect and build workflows and automations so that you can take pieces out of your day, uh, tasks out of your day. So process standardization, template utilization, and task automation. The next challenge we talked about was communication and collaboration barriers. So some solutions or smart strategies are to centralize communication hub, establish a centralized communication platform like a Slack, Microsoft Teams for all internal communications, replacing scattered emails and fragmented conversations. Now, for those of you who have small staffs of one, two, three people, it might not seem necessary, but trying a centralized communication hub can certainly cut down on some of those fragmented conversations for sure. The next piece is shared project boards. Implement visual project boards using systems such as Trello, Asana. Um, I personally use ClickUp as a, as a project management system. It allows you to track progress, assign tasks, set deadlines, and use visual workflows on projects and systems They'll make it easier to be transparent, clarify roles, responsibilities, and help identify bottlenecks or delays. The last is collaborate, a collaborative document editing. I know this seems simple, but a lot of us might not use this. And we send emails back and forth with the Word document and it's edited and sent to someone else. And then we don't know which is the original which is being used. So utilize cloud-based document editing tools such as Google Docs, Microsoft Office 360 to enable real-time collaborative and uh, envision and revision uh, control. I'm gonna pause for a second. I know there's a question. Uh, Josh is asking what project portfolio platforms have you seen successful through other nonprofits? Uh, Josh, for that, and, and I would say with whatever technology system that you're using, I have noticed nonprofits using so many different systems, whether that's project management, CRM systems, it is all about what the needs are. So for instance, I've seen uh, uh, Trello, Asana, Monday.com working well. I mentioned I use ClickUp. Every system have different functionalities and features. And based on the type of support that you have to build out a system, uh, some systems are completely copy paste and have a system ready to go, which may or may not fit your needs. Other systems are more DIY, right? There's tools and tutorials to build it out to what you need it to be. Uh, so it's really a what works best. Um, again, I am a huge proponent of ClickUp. It's a lower cost system. There is a free system, but once you start adding certain features, it might cost $10 a month. $14 a month based on how many users. Um, but I've used, you've seen it work very well. It is collaborative. So you can have multiple people working on one, uh, one system. Uh, there are different uh, versions of, of how to use project management systems in that, uh, in that example. So yeah, to your point, Josh, uh, there are multiple and we can certainly, I can certainly send um, some of those later. I know I have a, a, a link later on, which showcases uh, Aparo's 
free uh, and low cost tools as well. Uh, so the next area, and I'm being mindful of time, uh, the next challenge was communication, uh, excuse me, data management and reporting inefficiencies. So yeah, I'm just trying to follow my notes here. Uh, so with data management and reporting inefficiencies, a centralized information hub, establish a, a centralized repository for documents, both using data, cloud-based cl uh, cloud solutions. This could be a CRM system, or it could be a, a shared drive, like Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, either one can work based on your complexity. Those newer, smaller organizations that might not have a CRM system might use a shared drive system, and that's great. I would advise you to look at CRM systems. I think they're amazing and can really help to, to scale up an organization. Uh, but wherever you are at in your process, either option works. Um, so, you know, setting up Google Drive for your organization with folders for each department uh, or each program area, um, storing documents, spreadsheets, presentations, having easily accessible um, systems in place is, is critical. The next is data cleaning and standardization. I know I've been guilty of this, uh, but establishing a regular schedule for cleaning and standardizing data to ensure accuracy and consistency is important. Are you dedicating time each month or each quarter to review donor records, remove duplicates, update contact information? Some of your systems will already have that built in in automation, but if you don't, if you don't have that ability, are you reviewing the spreadsheets? Are you reviewing those areas so you can make sure that your data is being clean and standardized? Develop a standardized data entry fields and formats for volunteer hours and program data is an example of data cleaning and standardization. The next is automated reporting with templates. Uh, this process creates reusable report templates with pre-formatted sections, formulas, and data visualization elements. It integrates with templates uh, with your existing software or reporting tools to automate report generation. Uh, you know, so for instance, I have a uh, an assessment that I'll talk about more in a bit that I have a standard template already ready to go. So when data comes in, I plug and play the information and a report is generated for me. It cuts down hours on, on my reporting uh, every time I use it based on having a template. So what reporting systems do you need? Is it uh, quarterly financial reports? including income statements, balance sheets, cash flow statements? Do you need to design a template for impact reports, outlining key sections, mission statement, program summaries, all that already ready to go, and you just plug in the impact uh, data? Next on the challenge we talked about was suboptimal use of technology. So feature exploration. I mentioned earlier, my experience with a CRM system coming right in, utilizing it and leaving it because we didn't have time to find out the new features and functions, um, but dedicating time to thoroughly explore the features and functionalities of your existing software tools is critical. Uh, I know if we had spent a little bit more time and sacrificed a little bit of time finding out all these other features, we could have saved time in the back end and been more streamlined in our operations if we had used all those features and functions. So utilize the feature exploration of your current systems, whether that's CRM systems, donor management, um, anything in between. Integration exploration. So explore and implement integrations between your existing software tools to streamline data flow and automate manual tasks. This reduces manual data entry, minimizes errors, and creates more seamless workflow between different systems. So integrate your email marketing platform with your CRM system to automatically update subscriber lists and track email campaign performance. Or connect your online donation platform with your accounting software to automate donation processing and reconciliation. So yeah, instead of going into QuickBooks, typing in the donation information, and then going into your CRM system, it's already connected and done for you. 
The next is training and skill enhancement. Provide comprehensive training to staff on how to use existing software tools effectively. Offer workshop tools or online courses to enhance the skills and knowledge of your staff or volunteers. And provide regular software reviews. Conduct regular reviews of your software tools to assess their effectiveness, identify pain points as we talked about earlier, and explore potential upgrades or placements. And finally, and under the category of inadequate onboarding training, onboarding templates and checklists. Create standardized templates and checklists for onboarding new hires and volunteers. These documents should outline the step-by-step -step process, including introductions, paperwork, training modules, and check-ins. Create a centralized knowledge base. Establish a centralized knowledge base where all onboarding materials, training resources, policies, procedures, handbooks are kept. And that could be in a shared drive, like a Google Drive. That could be in a, um, a shared project management system so that all your staff, whether they're brand new or a year in, know I can go here to find these training uh, tutorials and training documents and information. Create bite-sized training modules. Break down training into shorter focused modules that can be easily consumed and digested. This approach accommodates different learning styles and schedules. And finally, offer regular training refreshers. Schedule regular training refreshers for existing staff to reinforce knowledge, introduce new processes or technologies, and foster continuous learnings. All right, I know that was a lot of information too, a lot of solutions and strategies. Out of those, I want to put another participant poll up to get a little more interaction too, is which of these following streamlining solutions do you think you have the most immediate, will have the most immediate impact on your organization? Implementing process standardization, creating templates for common tasks, adopting a centralized communications platform, centralizing data and documents, or automating reports with templates. And this is a single choice, so just choose one. Take about 30 seconds to review and select, and let's see where everyone's at. And as you're selecting, uh, just know we're also gonna be moving into the Q&A portion in a second, so feel free to pop any questions in that Q&A section that I might be able to answer for you. Answers are still coming in, so we'll give it a couple more seconds. All right. All right. All right, let's see what you have. With a resounding 63% implementing process standardization. Uh, and that is, that's on par with, with what I see in the work that I do. Process standardization is one of those, I'll get to it, not high on the priority list, but can pay dividends. Maybe not now when you have a full team and everyone is working hard and working at uh, optimal levels, but as soon as transitions start, as soon as new volunteers start to come in, as soon as things start to shift and change, how are you growing? Is there something standard in place or are people just creating their own processes? And what does that lead to? Does that lead to inefficiencies? Does that lead to misinformation, uh, inconsistencies? So certainly that's an area where uh, I see that often and encourage you to, to really focus on that as you, as you move forward. So as we start to come to a close, I, I wanna first, uh, before coming to the Q&A, Talk about some free and, and low cost tools and resources for you. So one, uh, let me say again, you're gonna get this presentation 
with the slide and everything is going to be linked in there. Uh, I have linked in a guide to the streamlining nonprofit operations, those four steps. Uh, so there's already going to be a guide in the handout that you can have. In addition to that, uh, you know, Josh, to your point, uh, recommendations for certain systems. Aparo has a curated list of free and low cost resources that you can find it linked in this uh, in this page. That you'll find project management systems, donor uh, donor systems, CRMs, and everything in between. But I highly encourage you to look at at that. Another resource that I hope all of you are already a part of TechSoup, but if you're not, I highly encourage you to sign up for TechSoup. A link to their system is, is here. Uh, resources for products and, res and, and services, discounted products, discounted services, highly encourage you to, to look at that. As we look at assessments, uh, Aparo has, as mentioned earlier, two assessments. One is a maturity model assessment that is linked in this, in this uh, page again. And the maturity model is a simple 13 question assessment uh, that you'll complete. You'll receive easy to read report illustrating the state of your organization's technology. And you'll also be able to read through a prioritized list um, or help identify a prioritized list uh, for your further attention and investment. And so that's more on the baseline for technology. Easy uh, can, can do for, for, for yourself on a self-assessment. The next step is Aparo's technology or tech therapy program. That's for larger scale technology needs via their community impact program. Uh, it's more of a 12 to six week, week, week program if you haven't been a part of it. I will say that um, as the, the COO for the nonprofit I worked for, we went through actually two different CIP programs. Highly encourage you to look into this if you feel that this would be something to, that could benefit your nonprofit. Uh, we did a technology refresh plan, able to review where we were, where our technology needs uh, currently lied and where we need to focus on going forward. So I highly recommend the, their technology therapy program. And lastly, Sharp Advising, uh, we've come up with a operational assessment for nonprofits um, that's free. Uh, it evaluates strategic focus, technology utilization, financial management, human resources and process improvement. And we'll give you automatically uh, a response of, of what those results were. And if you sign up for a free 30 minute consultation, you will also get a personalized report and recommendations for how to move forward and how to uh, streamline those operational areas that, um, that I've outlined. So those are some of the resources, both free, uh, low cost, that I believe can help take your organizations and your operations to the next level um, by focusing on streamlining one step at a time, not taking everything on, not looking at this as a daunting task and pushing to the back burner, but how do we today, tomorrow, next week, identify the areas that need to be focused on and start to uh, put measures in place to focus on those. Uh, so I appreciate your time today. I want to turn over to the, the Q&A. We have about um, five to six minutes. So if you have questions, we'd love to um, see those in uh, the, the Q&A section, uh, whether that's on, on the, the challenges, on the steps, or on solutions. Um, if you don't, obviously, uh, I want to respect your time. It's been a pleasure and an honor to present this, uh, but please feel free to now share um, comments or, or uh, questions. And so Crystal's asking, can you please share again about the consultation and support? So uh, Crystal, if you're referring to the consultation regarding Sharp Advising, so uh, linked in uh, this presentation, as you'll see, uh, it will bring you to the operational assessment. It is a five part uh, assessment that you will fill out, that you will complete, that's all free. You will automatically receive the results from it's a Google Forms uh, process. You will receive that. If you then choose to sign up for a free 30-minute consultation with me, I will then provide a uh, personalized report that you will get during the consultation that will outline kind of where you stand 
in those functional areas uh, that I mentioned, uh, strategic focus, technology utilization, financial management, human resources, and process improvement. And then you'll be just, you know, be more aware of where you're at and be able to, to make an informed decision on moving forward. Uh, Lisa has stated, do you have any recommendations for solutions in streamlining HR processes? Timekeeping is big one that comes to mind, but also things like performance reviews, goal setting. Um, certainly there are technology pieces out there, obviously just systems and processes to use. Um, as you think of HR in, in general, one of the main uh, technology pieces that, that we utilized at the nonprofit that I worked at uh, was Gusto. So Gusto was a, is a payroll, but also benefits system. It allows for um, all the back end, uh, behind the scenes HR functions to, to flow through that system, communicating everything with, with teams. Um, that is separate from performance reviews. Obviously you can uh, state information that can be communicated via that system. Uh, but in regards to uh, technology systems or timekeeping systems, uh, there are other aspects that, you know, I'm gonna follow up with you, uh, Lisa, and, and share some specifics with that, uh, that I think that can that can help you uh, and, and your team. So I'm gonna follow up uh, after, this, after this call for sure. Any other final questions as we as we wrap up? When it looks like uh, Crystal said, whoever asked that question, please reach out to me so I can connect you with our team member who has spent the past year with, um, with these systems. So yes, thank you, Crystal. Obviously this whole webinar and this group that's on here, uh, it's a community. And so I welcome everyone to connect with each other for sure. I know there's systems and, and technology, whether it's technology platforms or other processes and systems that uh, are continually coming out and being developed. And so feel free to share your thoughts as well. Uh, and last question, I'd like to learn more about data collection tools. I'm assuming they will be in the curated list. Uh, yes, data collection tools, let me make a note of that as well. So depending on uh, specifically where, um, John, if I'm, if I'm stating that name correct, specifically, if you could put a, another maybe comment in, when you talk about data collection, um, is that data collection for a specific area? Uh, and a lot of the, the project management tools, CRM tools, um, fundraising tools, data collection is built in. Um, so I'm curious if there's a specific area that you're looking to, to get more information on? Data collection tools for students, clients for reporting for multiple grants. Mm -hmm. um, and Yinting, did, did you have a comment? I, I just heard you chime in. Um, it's, it sounds like it could be like a case management tool that you can pull reports depending on what your grant is looking for. Um, so yeah, we do have a list for that. I'll be sure to, um, attach that to the follow-up email. I appreciate that. And yeah, there are several client based, uh, systems out there. I know when, uh, in my time as a COO, we used, uh, we use a specific system, uh, called Apricot 360, and there's different measures of that. Uh, very detailed, very very in depth. Um, of course, you're going to look at price that's associated with certain client management systems um, and fitting the needs. Uh, but there are client management systems, to Yin Ting's point, out there uh, that can provide great data feedback and uh, be a great central hub for your clients. Different than a CRM system that is used for donors I and mean, even volunteers. So with that, I know it's one o'clock. I'm going to be respectful of time. Again, I appreciate uh, all of your time today. 
Uh, I hope you were able to take something away from this. Uh, and uh, I, I look forward to hopefully working with all of you, any of you uh, in the future. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck on uh, the rest of your, your year. Thank you so much, Matt. That was great. Um, everyone, you will receive a follow-up email from me, um, like Matt shared. Um, it'll include all the links in, this, in the slide deck, uh, so you can feel free to, to go through that. Um, if you do have any additional questions on kind of the Apollo services that Matt shared, um, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, just reply to that email. I'll be happy to help you out. Matt, thank you so much for putting all this together. Amazing job. Uh, really, really informational. Do appreciate you. Um, and everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.